Hi everyone, thank you for subscribing to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna present a really great practice technique to increase speed in passages where you have to move your fingers quickly. All right, now this technique is from my new practice course, which I'm thrilled to announce. I just launched a large scale step-by-step -step method for learning music. So if you find yourself stuck learning a piece or you just you just want to become a better player faster then do check out this course it's on violinlab.com already have english subtitles spanish subtitles will be coming soon so check out the link below okay so this technique this addresses two problems that we have with playing fast one is mental processing speed the other is mechanical speed, or what violin teachers like to refer to as facility. So there are places in our music where our fingers really can move as fast as they need to, but for some reason it might be a little complex. We cannot think fast enough, and that slows us down. And this is something that students don't often realize. They don't realize it's their brain, not their fingers, that are preventing them from playing fast. However, there are places where mechanical speed is a problem. We know exactly what we have to do, but due to inefficient finger action, we're really not playing it as fast as we, can, we should be. So here's how this works. Uh, I'm, take a passage, find a passage in your music that you need to play quicker. And the first step is, without the bow, is to start laying your fingers down in order. Just start reading note to note. Put fingers down and leave them down, okay? I'm going to give you two examples. One is from Wolfhart Etudes, Opus 45, number one. This is very familiar, you probably know it. The other is a tricky little section in the Vivaldi A minor concerto. So we'll use this as an example. So looking at the Wolfhart, to start, what I'm gonna do is just start putting my fingers down. So C is the first note, and then B. Okay, now moving to C. Well, my second finger is already down, so I don't need to do anything. Back to B, back to C. Okay, so I've got those notes covered. Next finger is third finger, D, and then fourth finger. And now reading ahead, all my fingers are covering those pitches. So what you're gonna do is keep reading until the point where a finger that you already have down has to move locations. So in this example, in the second measure right here, this G, my third finger has to cross over to the D string. Okay, so that's my stopping point. So now I'm going to put a box around all these notes that I am covering with these fingers. And this is gonna be my first block. Okay, I'm calling these sections blocks. And I'm gonna number this one. This is my first block. All right, now I'm starting a new block because a finger has to change locations. So now I have my third finger here on this G on the D string. The next finger is an E. Okay, I have that down. Then we have the C over here. All right, this is the next block because the next note, that B, that first finger B, I would have to lift my first finger and put it on the A string. Okay, so that's my boundary line. Now, there are not strict rules to this. If you want to create boundaries between string crossings, that's okay too. I could put a box around these notes because they're on the D string. And then I could start my new block here when I move back to the A string. But let's just keep with the rules that I stated. So I'm gonna put everything in a box that I can cover without moving a finger to a new location. Okay, and now back to that original block because this is the same music as, as the first measure. And then here's the next block. 
Okay, so let's move on. So back to the A string here, C, B, C, B, C, D, open E, we skip opens, obviously, because we don't use a finger. All right, my first finger has to change location, so here's my new block, F, G, A, B, A, G, F, okay, all those fingers I can cover. Now I have a new block coming with that D because my third finger has to, to move. All right, so there we're gonna stop with this example right here. Okay, the next step then is to look at the blocks. And I want you to, as quick as you can, go from block to block, putting all the fingers down on the notes that are in that block. So here is, here's the first block. I'm gonna put down my fingers, all my fingers as fast as possible. There, boom, boom, boom. Da 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 da. All right, those are all the fingers in that block. Here's the next block. Block two, block three, block four, block five, block six, and then it'll be back to the same to the same music as the beginning again. All right, so block one, two, three, you're just gonna go block to block to block. You're gonna put all the fingers down simultaneously as quick as you can. And what this is going to do, this is what's going to increase your processing. You are not thinking note to note anymore. You are clustering the directives from your brain to your fingers. You're, you are instructing the whole crowd. You're telling the whole crowd what to do, not just each individual. Okay, the next step is one that will help with facility. It's gonna help with efficiency. So now that you have your blocks, what you're going to do is you're going to Put your fingers down on the notes in your block and you're going to lightly press with your fingertips. You're going to make little pulses in order of, that the notes occur in the music. So you're essentially going to be playing the left hand notes, but you're going to just rest all the fingers in the block down at the same time. So here's my first block. I'm going to play, I'm going to press down those notes. Okay, I'm not playing them, so you won't be able to hear them, but hopefully you can see my fingers pressing. So two, one, two, one, two, three, four, three. Okay, that's the first block, and I'm, well, actually it keeps going. Two, one, two, one, two, okay. Da, 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 dun, 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 That's the whole block. Now I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna start trying to get that faster and faster and faster. I'm gonna try to make those little presses really, 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 really fast. So what we're doing, is we are getting these muscles, okay, in the ends of our fingers really fast. Okay, this is what's gonna help get our fingers moving faster. Watch out for the thumb. Try not to press back with your thumb. Just try to get your fingers, the ends of your fingers pressing really fast. So here's as fast as I can do it. Let me get my fingers in place. Okay, here I go. I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so I was just pressing the fingertips. And then I move to the next block and I press those as fast as I can. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. And back to the first block. Da, 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 next block. Next block. Next block. Next block. Okay, and then you then play it. Try playing it. You you will feel a difference. <laughs> What you'll notice is that your bow might be slowing you down. That's something else to work on. So let's do one more example. This is a section from the Vivaldi A minor. You may not have played this piece yet. Maybe you have played this. If you have, you know that the section toward the end where you have 16th note after 16th note, you know it can get really bogged down. This is one of those places where it's difficult both mechanically as well as with reading and processing. 
So I'm going to take these, these two measures, because I think this is really in the thick of, of the difficult passage. And so my first block here is the third finger and the first finger. Okay, and then I have to move my third finger, so I'm going to start my next block. So I've got three, I can put a three down, I can put a four down, I can put a one down. And then I would have to move that my third finger again for the G sharp. So this is my next block. So block one, block two, now block three, high third finger, fourth finger, second finger, first finger. All right, that's my next block. And then I have to go to the E string. Those two notes are a block because my first finger has to jump over to the A string. And that's just a block by itself because it has to move back. And then here we go again. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and just show you where these blocks are. And then back to, back to just practicing the blocks. So for the brain, first block, second block, third block, fourth block, fifth block, sixth block, seventh block. Okay, you get the idea. Then we do the little presses. I call this speed typing. Like you're on a, key, a typing a computer keyboard and you're just typing like this as fast as you can. So now the typing. And you can even do repetitions. You can just concentrate on one block and do it over and over. So here's the second block. I'm gonna do this one over and over. Three, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, one. Now the next block, three, four, two, one. Next block, next block. Okay, you get the idea and then, then you play it. And you just think, whoa, how, how did I not know that I could play it that fast? You will be amazed at what you're really able to do. You just didn't know you could do it. So practice techniques work. Good practice techniques work miracles. You will go so much further in such a shorter amount of time when you know how to practice. So I do hope you visit Violin Lab. Hope you check out the practice course. So much to learn and thank you for watching.